everybody it's Christy here at my artful adventures and we are in a uh, we're in an event today with the take five Facebook group and we are going to um, today my segment is going to be I'm gonna redo a folio that had some kind of an issue <laughs> last time I tried to make it and then also let's see what else are we gonna do we are also going to do some more um, coloring of stamped images and give you some ideas on some fun ways to do that. So I think that's always fun to, um, you know, to try some different things and have those little things in your back pocket, so to speak, so that you can, um, you know, have some fun and try different things. And I just think that that's always a, a fun, fun thing. Hi, Estella. How are you? So, you know, I tell you, it's just, you know, you never know. Sometimes you don't want to do anything extra, and sometimes you just, it's fun to play around. And, you know, so so that's what I like to do is give you some ideas so that, you know, if you want to take some time and, and just work on some of your skills or techniques, you know, you've got something else to try. And um, so we, yesterday we worked on some of the, um, Oh, what am I trying to say? We did some watercolor techniques, and today we're going to do um, a, a couple more, and those are going to be using water as well. But we're going to do a little bit different. We're going to use some uh, watercolor pencils. Hi, Mary. And so to start off, I think what I'm going to do today is go ahead and stamp my uh, a couple of images so that they can start drying, because I think we we figured out that if you use this memento ink, I mean, it will dry and be water resistant, but it's got to be really dry. So since I'm gonna redo um, a folio, I think I did that like the Friday before Christmas. And oh my goodness, I just do not have any clue what in the world happened with that. Um, so <laughs> I'm gonna give it a go. And I mean, it's so easy. That's that's always kind of the funny thing when you've got something really easy and you've got it messed up it's like what in the world happened there so i've got two different images that we're going to work on isn't this cute this is a little um kind of a little country scene and i think it's actually called um yeah i don't know i'll have to get out the package in a second let me get these on here them back to their carrier so they don't get lost this actually comes with a thank you for your kindness um, little sentiment each one of those stamps had one sentiment that was with it and here is like the little village and it says thinking of you I love little houses how many of you love little houses I just I don't know why well actually I love miniatures I just love miniature things in general um, I always have. I don't know why. <laughs> but, you know, hey. Gotta have something fun, right? So anyway, we're in the Take 5 group over on Facebook. And this is our event. And I'm streaming on Facebook and YouTube. So if you see me, um, you know, commenting to someone who you cannot figure out where in the world I'm seeing that comment, then it's probably on the other platform, you guys. And I think after, well, I didn't get a real good image on that one, but it's good. It's good enough. We're going to color it in anyway. So it'll be fine. And I'm going to come back and clean those later. I'm not going to mess with that now. So there we go. Let me grab the package. I'll tell you what these two are called. If I can find old packages. Um... This one is called Neighborhood Scene with these little houses. This is Neighborhood Scene. And then this one is called Countryside Scene. This almost looks like it was meant to be fall. It's got all these leaves falling off. And I don't know, I might try to see if we can't kind of turn that into spring. But I'm gonna set that off to the side and make sure that that gets dry, good and dry. Oh my goodness. I hope you guys are off to a great new year. And 
What did you guys do for the holidays? Anything special? We had a lot of family here. And they left on New Year's Day. Or my, my daughter and her guy left on New Year's Day. Um, let me back out of here while I work on this part. There we go. So you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so on this one, we're really going to start with... Um, it would it would work great if you had a an eight and a half by eleven piece. You would have plenty of uh, paper to do this. But I'm going to use this twelve by twelve, and um, my folio. I want my folio to the fold lines to be the easiest without you know any resistance. And so that's this way. I can feel it. You can actually feel it. Like if I try to fold it this way, I can feel the resistance. So I want my fold lines to go this way. So this is the direction that I want my 11 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off here. Hi, Deborah, I'm good, how are you? Thanks, Mary. Hey, Molly. Happy New Year to all of you. Okay, and this way we want it to be 11 and a quarter. And I'm kind of thinking this may be where I went awry last time. I think I went ahead and did my eight and a half by 11 last time what have i done here this isn't right either what did i just do oh my goodness you guys no not eight eight and a quarter okay got it <laughs> oh my word i'm like that doesn't look right okay so now we've got eight and a quarter by 11. oh it's got smudgy dirty marks Oh my goodness, I've got um, stuff from my ink pad. You know what? I'm not going to worry about it because <clears throat> this is just going to be kind of a... I just want to show you how to get this done, all right? Oh my goodness. So we've got that. I'm going to flip this over so I can do scoring. And that's one thing kind of nice about this particular thing, although... It's backwards from my other scoreboard, and sometimes it's, like, confusing. I'll get things scored, and it's like, wait, what was I doing? But that's just me. Hi, huh, Carol. Good morning. Okay, so we are, depending on where you are, I guess it's already um, noon on the East Coast. Okay, so we're going to score this at three inches. And this is why I've got to be real careful, because sometimes I can get it, and it'll jump out of the track. And then three and a quarter... Six and a quarter. And I may have messed this up too last time. And six and a half. So if you're making these quarter inch spaces. And that's going to serve us two purposes. And then nine and a half. And nine and three quarters. So we're, we've done all of our scoring all in one fell swoop, all right? So now we're going to cut off two and seven eighths inches. So I'm sure that our, um, I'm sure our things we stamped will be nice and dry by the time we by the time I show you this and try to redeem myself. Okay, so two and seven eighths. <laughs> Carol says she didn't even realize it was afternoon. <coughs> Isn't that the way that goes? <laughs> Molly, online, oh, online, Joanne's adventure order on seven, then 19 delay and finally 23 cancel. And it took them a month to tell you that they canceled your order. That's, that's really interesting. I just don't think I'm going to try to do that again and, and order online from them. I don't know what the deal is. I just don't know. Okay, so now we've got this section here. And now we're going to turn it and... Um, see how this section is our small section leave that and then we're going to cut off this and cut it off clear over here where the tab 
or, or the tab, the put it on this inside section to cut off, okay? So we're just gonna slice that completely off. All right, and now on these, we're gonna slice these. We're gonna slice them right on the that uh, outside of that second score line. So you've got it like this, okay? You want that because that's gonna be our little glue tab, all right? It's like a little hinge, a little glue tab, and so we want to leave that section on. And this little section I've got left here at the end can be a tiny little pocket. So that can be a teeny tiny pocket. And now we want one more here and we want it to be two and seven eighths inch wide. And so we've got this and we can cut the little tab off of here and use that for a pocket. All right, so, so far out of that, this is what we've got that we've wasted. <laughs> That's it. Now this part, I tell you what, I want to make sure, yeah, I don't know. I want to trim this to where it is the same and I don't know what I've done. S stay still, I've got this other little thing kind of whack them out out here. So I'm gonna just trim that little bit off because I want those to be the same, uh, you know, closer in width than that. I don't know what happened. Okay, so now those are gonna be pockets together. All right, you ready? So now we're just gonna put it together. I'm gonna, I'm maybe gonna do some corner rounding on it. And then that's gonna be it, but I, like I said, I have no idea what I did that last time. So now we're just gonna fold all of these on these score lines. And <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to redeem myself. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's just so, so silly when you do something and you know it's gonna be so easy and then you mess it up and you don't even know what you did. I never did know how that center part got. Of course, you know, you'd almost have to have it all undone so you could see where you went awry with your measurements, right? Okay, so this is gonna be the main little part of our tiny folio, is just like this. So now we're gonna make these and we're gonna <coughs> do the little waterfall. Well, actually, let's see, let me grab my corner rounder. Let's just use the small, the small one, so it's a quarter inch. So I'm just gonna snip these off on all four corners here. I love these things. They'll just chomp through everything. And I'm gonna do the bottoms. So the part, not the hinge tab part, but the bottom section. could you know even you even though I said I'm just gonna use this to show you how to do it I could go back since it's dirty and got smudged ink on it I could go back and layer some pretty things on it right and then I'm gonna do that for this pocket yeah I tell you what I really got a mess going with that ink <laughs> who else gets inky fingers I can't be the only one. Oh, thanks for spreading it out. Hey, Susan, how are you? Okay, so that's gonna go like that. So those are those two. And now let's just fold these. I thought I'd use this off-white paper, hopefully, so you could be able to see it a little bit better. Oh my goodness, can you believe though that we are already into 2024? Who would have thunk it? You know, I had some information come and we have a, a class reunion this summer for my high school. 
and I was telling my daughter, you know, which one it was. And she, she, her eyes just get real big. It, like, you know, she couldn't believe it. And I go, if you can't believe it, think about me. Yep, kind of a, kind of a big one. All right, now I'm going to make, let's put a little finger notch in here. And I don't ever really measure these. I just kind of do that. And you know what? Although, I do want this one to kind of match up. So it's in, you know, it's not like way off to one side from this one. So we'll just hold this under here and then I can just line it right up there. And I know exactly where it is. I didn't go quite as deep on that. I got paper flipping out there. Okay, so on this one now, we're just going to take this. And now we're just going to put a little bit of glue along here. If you were going to use double-sided tape, you'd have to use a really thin one. And I'm just going to fold this because it makes it easy to see where I am. And just put it in here. And just make sure you're not in the way. I'm going to bump it down. Let's see, can I get any closer? I'm just going to bump it down a little bit. It doesn't have to be all the way up there. It can. It wouldn't hurt anything. I'm just going to put it down inside a little bit and then lift it up so so if you've got any ink squeezing out there you can wipe it off and then this one see how easy this is and it's just such a cute little thing I mean it would be easy to get something you know it would be kind of a cute thing to put a gift card in or something like that and now you can use the these um, these score lines is kind of a guide to make sure you're in between them. You don't want to be over the line because then that would cause a problem as you try to fold. Now, if you want to, you can just keep going and do it down. The one I showed you before <coughs> had one going up at the bottom, and I thought that was kind of fun. I can't remember where I first saw this, you guys, or I would tell you. But um, give credit. I tell you, these things, though, you know, these ideas just go around and around and around. And sometimes it's pretty hard to figure out who maybe did it first, right? You just don't know. And everybody might, you know, give it a little tweak. And each time it becomes a little bit different. So for sure you have no idea. Okay. Okay. So there's like, there's just four, four little waterfall things. I'm not going to take the time today to do the Velcro because I'm sure you get how to, you know, how to put Velcro dots on. But that, uh, the actual Velcro, Velcro brand, um, I like those. They're super thin. They're tiny and thin. And um, just when you put them on, make sure that you... Give them a little bit of time to set up before you're, you know, s snipping them back and forth. Okay, and I'm just going to put this around my outer edge on three sides. And put that right here. Oh, my little flip-flop things are in the way. And then just put that there. And you can either bump it up here along here see this is the one now where I cut this off it would have fit exactly so this is the piece that would have been a little bit more narrow and I don't know why but it was and to make it so that it fits and look like it went together I thought it was just best to do that and you could go ahead and you know give these a little bit of inking so you could see this part and I know many of you have seen before what I do. My little trick if I forgot to ink something up and then I decide I wanted it inked, I'll just take a little piece of paper like this and let me grab my ink. Oops, where is some? That's not it. Well, that's not it either. What in the world? I think my... 
I think that gray is here. We'll just use this gray color. That's not really the best, right? Hi, Doris. Hey there, Melanie. So you can just, you know, come back in and then give it a little, you know, bump with your ink. Just, you know, you can use that and then you aren't gonna get it all over where you don't want it to be. And there's lots of times that I use that method to, you know, come back in and, uh, and then if it's, you know, if it was straight, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can use this technique and pretty much ink anywhere you need to on a project that you would have rather, you know, had a little bit of inked edges if you had forgotten. So I use that little method a lot. And it seems to work fine. Okay, so let's see here. Put my lid back on. So now there it is. And I would just fold this down and put my little Velcro right there. And then you've got your little folder here. Here's the other one that I made. And the only thing wrong with it, oh, and I put my little pocket here. I did my pockets a little bit different here. I just made that. You could do that. I could have, um, I could have left this pocket the exact size and I could have made like a little tuck spot right there. That would have worked fine too. You know, you've got all those scraps, you can do whatever you want to with them. But um, this was what, I ended up with this big gap here, and that was where I didn't know where I had gone wrong with my measurements. But this is that Velcro, and it's just tiny, and it's so easy to use, you guys. So, um, you know, that's, that's that. So there we go. I hope I have redeemed myself for that project. <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's come back to our little ink edges. Now, yesterday, well, I've done this a couple of times now, so you shouldn't have any problem. I just, just look for the little chunky, um, the little chunky journal, I think is what I've been calling it. Oh, what kind of paper did I use? Well, that was just, um, that was just a, a card stock was what I was using. Actually, that's all I'm going to be using on anything. I am not using a watercolor paper today, even though we're going to use the um, watercolor. And this is just, um, these are just close to my heart card stocks. That's it. And you guys, this one, I thought this would be fun. Now, I already decided after the fact. I had glued this all around. These little frames have, um, they are already on back order from Close to My Heart. This is like a, I think I called this a photo frame. And then it, we've got a stamped, it looks like a stamped, uh, like a postage stamped frame and then this window frame and i think these are just adorable these dies evidently are already on back order and i don't know i do not have a date as to when they're supposed to be coming back in if you are interested in those though let me know and i can let you know when they come back in but i left this one to be a pocket because i thought how fun would that be to um where's my little thing i was using for a little mask I mean, I tossed it to the side, but <clears throat> I thought it would be fun, <clears throat> excuse me, to be able to stick something in there. Imagine this is a bigger piece of paper to stick it in here like this with, you know, with the um, information about what I had done on this one. And so this one was just colored pencils that I ended up using some Gamsol with. And the white, I just couldn't get the white like I really wanted. And I finally went back in with a tiny bit of white acrylic paint. And um, I thought, you know what, that would have been kind of nice to add some down here. It would have added a little bit more dimension on there. And that would have been fun. And this was just purely the, this was the marker. Yeah, this was where we used the, the marker on the, um, just out on the the plastic sheet and then you know used it like that with some water and these are just so so fun to be able to you know like i said have these techniques back in your back pocket hey there there is our messy craft corner thanks for sprinkling me out jimmy lou 
so you know so i got this um how to do this <clears throat> in a couple of places and it's super easy it is super easy to get this and so my my idea for this is to continue to put little techniques that i try and then somehow include the information of what they are because you know as time goes by we'll forget what we did right we'll just forget and it's not um <laughs> so that's just how it works and especially if you're doing very many techniques most of the time you just end up forgetting so I'm going to cut this kind of here. I don't need all this. Now this is just regular cardstock like I use all the time. For some reason it seems like the white color is um, not as heavy. And I don't know, I do not manufacture paper myself. And so I have no idea why that is. But it seems like the, the white color and even that ivory color are just not quite as thick as uh, when you have one of the colors and you know the colors have a white core like like this whoops they have a white core for um, close to my heart card stuff so when you've got this white core you know then there's some kind of a coating <coughs> that's on the outside to turn it you know that color so I don't know if that's why it feels a little bit more substantial or not. Okay, so today what we're going to do is I've got some colored pencils, watercolor pencils. And so I thought we would try some things with some watercolor pencils. And um, I'm going to show you a, a couple of techniques to, um, you know, to do that with. One of the things you can do is you can simply just, oh my goodness, where did I put my, the sharpener? Oh, there I see it. I was going to say, uh, some of these look like they need some some help. So I'm just going to lightly put this on here. I'm trying to use the side of it to get some on here. And um, so I'm going to put a little bit of blue for the sky. Let's put a little bit of green along here for our hills. And you can just kind of put in your colors. I'm just going to use this kind of light for some of it. Or not. <laughs> I don't I tell you guys, I have no idea. I cannot figure out why my camera shakes so bad my table is not shaky i cannot figure out why it i don't know why it just does not work well yeah the the gamsole i did well wait a second hang on a second melanie Yeah, we, yes, the card, um, this was just cardstock too on the one that we used, the Gamsol. This one, um, this was stamped on watercolor paper. But I think that one was just the cardstock. So we've got that on there. Um, some of these, I think, I'm going to use a little lighter green on here. And just kind of rough that in on some of my trees. I'm not going to do all of it. Oh, there's a little more green. And then we'll just get started. And all I'm going to do, I I just have a regular paintbrush that I'm going to use today. And I've just got some water. And so part of the time, I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to pinch it off. A little. Just take my fingers and just kind of give it a little swipe. And then I'm just going to start using it like that. Now, sometimes if you're not getting enough movement, you might need a little bit more water. But you don't need to really, don't try and saturate it. And that I am not really that pleased with <laughs> at all. I don't really want those lines in the sky. What you can do... Here's another way you can use them. Is just on your pencil, take your water brush and just get it here. 
and then we do this and then we've got more color that plops down there well I love how I can do a fail when I'm trying to show people stuff it's just this so magnificent <laughs> but now you're gonna you want to do this a little bit different than when you're using watercolor paper and if you stamp it on watercolor paper you can certainly you know use your um, you want to put a little bit of water down to start with here let's do this maybe maybe it can be saved but I don't really want tons of water on this paper or it'll start to kind of buckle and the fibers just cannot take it on regular cardstock that much and you know you can just have a kind of a hint of color and that is not a hint of color I'm not real pleased with that but anyway it gives you an idea and I maybe go back a little bit add a little bit more water Let's see if I can't spread it out a tiny bit more we'll see okay now I think one thing about it is let's lay down a little bit more color at the top here and if you lay down more color you've got more to pull down okay I know that so let's try that again and just wipe it off and then just begin to pull that color down you can kind of like work in a little circle and it helps to kind of bring it in make sure you've got a tiny bit of water on there because the water is what's going to activate it and it's okay if it's got that darker color up there although it's not as apparent like when we get down here into the little buildings that's going to be a lot less apparent that you've got the darker color will actually look like it's supposed to be there it'll kind of give it some dimension and that's the thing it's going to give it a little bit of dimension as you go along so just get your water up there into the pencil that you've laid down already and then just pull it down but yeah this is just you know I wanted you to know that you can get by and just use your regular you know card that you stamp on and try something a little bit different you know I have to say when I did this before I did not even think about doing the hills back here or anything so I mean it gives it a little bit of interest back there right so now let's just go ahead and work into here and when that dries I'm gonna put a little bit of the dark back in that green and just pull it on down you can just pull it down and it'll you know continue to get down there you don't own any alcohol markers let's see oh hey let's come back here hey Sue yeah they are great little landscapes they're cute and they're fun you didn't have to draw anything and that's the thing a lot of people are just not willing to you know give a go at drawing I know Melanie here with painting crafty she really is such a great teacher of drawing and she just describes it so easy for drawing but you know there's still gonna pe be people who do not like to draw and they're not ever gonna try it because they're they're gonna feel like they just can't and <laughs> 
Sue says that you won't know it's a fail unless I tell you. <laughs> but look, you know, this is starting to look not so bad. That dark up there is starting to kind of give it some dimension. So, I mean, that, even that, I think, and the sky, now that the sky is drying, it doesn't look quite so bad, um, you know, and maybe we can come back with a little blue and kind of blend some of that out, um, or a little bit, maybe when, I don't know, um, it's still damp up here, and I just don't know how much more, even if it dries, I don't know if we should add any more water and pull that out. I haven't really had a lot of luck with letting it dry and then coming back and reactivating it. It's like whatever is there um, seems to kind of be there at that point. Um, so I don't know. I just don't know about that. But yeah, I mean, they're cute, cute little images. So then, um, so Melanie says she doesn't own any alcohol markers. Would they work well on cardstock? You mean if you started buying um, alcohol markers, you have to use, a, yes, you can use them on cardstock, uh, but I can tell you the best kind of cardstock to get, and it's a Nina cardstock. It's called, and it's solar white, and I can't remember right offhand the weight of it, but it is perfect for using for alcohol markers, because yes, not all paper is created equal and when you start using alcohol markers with it you don't want so much of it to absorb into the paper that it is like sucking all of your juice out of your alcohol markers right so you have to really be careful with you know what you're using for that so let's make let's use our little house down here let's I think this is a different blue than we used so let's just do this and I'm gonna actually I'm gonna try and sharpen it a little bit so I have a nicer little point so I'm just gonna do that I should have checked these yeah there we go so if you get them sharpened look at that look out that I mean there's a lot of pigment in there these and this that I'm using these are called um, Derwent watercolor pencils and I just all I have of that one is just this one little tin but I do like them they have a lot of pigment in them now I'm just gonna go under the roof line and give it give it a good amount of color lay that down pretty good and then just go around the outside of this okay and now I almost wish I had a, a little brush that was a little bit um, smaller but now we're just gonna pull give it some water and help that start dissolve and then just pulling it in just start pulling it all around here into these open spaces on your house and sometimes if you kind of work it in a teeny tiny circle it helps pull it out too and you know it doesn't have to be perfect you guys it really doesn't just pull it out here and as you drag that color out I mean by the time that it dries it's gonna look like there's plenty of blue on your house and like I said these dark places just kind of give it some dimension and little white spaces that might be left you know they're okay and see that um, that black that we used from that memento ink um, by letting it dry it's you know it seems to be fine now the church the church I just don't know because I don't have anything that is kind of a gray color or anything to use in here. And I'm afraid whatever I use, if I use like the black thinking that it would, you know, give it a little bit of a shadow, I'm afraid it'll just make a mess. So I think for that, I'm better off to just maybe um, do the roof and call it a day. And here, let's, let's go back and put a little bit of... Uh, 
color on the roof over here. And I mean, this is such a small space that you wouldn't even have to do any water on that. And you've got, I mean, your little water, your little house has got a little bit of a watercolor. And, you know, you could just leave it at that. I think I'm going to use, let's use a different brown on the church steeple and roof. That's such a funny color. When I look at that color, it just looks like the the wood on the pencil. You know, that would have been, I think, <clears throat> I'm going to do a black on that one, you guys. Just give it a little bit of definition. And then, since we're not going to color it in, I think it'll make the white stand out more. Maybe. That's my hope. And then I'll just put a little bit down here on the little window ledges. There. Okay. Let's put a little bit of uh, green on these little bushes. Maybe I should work from the bottom up on those to pull it up. Hey, Martha. Yeah, you made it. Now, and I think it's, if you don't put so much of a straight line, it's probably better too. This one has kind of got, he got a little bit too straight there. And then, you know, maybe you can pull some of that. If you've got extra, maybe just go ahead and pull it somewhere else. Okay, that's not working. That's not enough um, color on there. So what, this is a good place to just take it right from the pencil, just with a little water, and then just, you know, just dot these little plants. Of course, this also could be a place that you want to, um, let's use a little bit of that, is that the dark green? Yeah, let's use this lighter green. Kind of. So you're always using, you know, dip, dipping back into the water, getting a little bit of color off of the pencil. Just kind of go in like for a little bit of a wash effect like that. Get it over here. And you just keep, you know, going and adding, just adding your little bits and pieces. Let's see, what color house shall we put over here? I've got some orange here. Let's do that. So let's see. I maybe do you want me to try and here? Let me see. I might could lower this a tiny bit. A little bit. I tell you, it only you can only zoom in so much. So if the camera is far, it's just harder to see. And so the same thing, I'm just going to lay out my heavy amounts around the section around the edge. And then get a little water. You don't want to start with too much, I don't think, because you might get it to uh, get all into your windows and everything. So just some, and then just activate that watercolor pencil and start dragging it around. Give it a little, if you kind of circle it over here into your color, it helps get it onto your brush and you can get, get it moving. But you can tell once I get farther into the house, 
don't have as much. So it certainly gets lighter over there. But you know, it's just a fun, fun way. I don't think I'm gonna have time to do much of the other one. But you know, I've done both kinds of techniques though. I mean, you can either lay it right on your paper or you can pull it right off of the pencil. Either way, it works out really well. Let's put a little bit, uh, we need some roof color up here too. Now this one's a bigger space, so we're probably gonna have to pull our color around here. And you could maybe use one of those water brushes where you can fill it, but I don't know. I, I don't feel like you've got enough control of the water coming out of that brush as much as you can have with a regular paint brush. And, you know, that could just be me. I don't know. But, you know, you squeeze it to get it out. You'd constantly have to be squeezing and kind of pinching off your... Um, the water on there. So now, let's see, should we put a tiny, and so again, when you need something tiny, if your pencil is really sharp, you can just add it on there, and then you can't hardly tell that that's not got, you know, any water to it. And, um, and so then, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and use this darker color, and you could probably do it either way, like with these stepping stones up here. You could take a tiny bit and just dot it on. That's got a lot, I can see it's got a lot of water in it. But it did make, you know, and that might be another spot where you would, but it's gonna, look, that's cool though, because as it's starting to dry, you really can tell that it's got more of that watercolor effect instead of just laying it down with the pencil. And if it's tiny, I mean, we could go back up here and do this. This was one where one place that we just laid the color down. You just have to be careful that you're not all outside the line. I do not want to do it with the black though. That scares me. <laughs> I'm afraid the roof on the church, I'm afraid we might just go all have a big mess, but I will <clears throat> Let's try and do a little bit with the door though. And for that, I am going to use a tiny bit of water and we'll just do it like it really is watercolor on here. Oh, we didn't do the step down there. Let's put a little on there and then just add a little bit of the black. Hopefully it can be kind of gray. Oh yeah, look at that. And again, this is just, you know, our card stock. And I think I'll go ahead and put the, let's darken this little step. And since that was gray, maybe we want to, maybe this is like concrete and we need to, oh look, it's already kind of gray there. So that's got a little bit different. Here's a little drive. That, that looks like it should be brown, I think. What do you think? Yeah, oh, I bet that is so true. Now, Sharon says now she needs to, um, she needs to have some watercolor pencils now. There's so many brands of watercolor pencils. I mean, my goodness, you can even get Crayola watercolor pencils. Or Crayola paints. You know, you don't have to have, I mean, you could certainly just use a pan of watercolor. You don't have to do this. You really don't. Um, but I think that sometimes, you know, if you're scared to use watercolors out of the pan, this is a different way to do it. And let's see, let's use our right from the pencil method to, we don't have anything on those tree trunks. 
keep forgetting which brown I'm using. One's a little bit darker than the other. So let's just go ahead and come in here. Here's our little mailbox post. Let's give it a little bit of brown. All these little green stems and things on our little flowers. I mean, it just, you know, you just keep playing around. And it just starts to come together. Just put, well, that was a little much. You know, this, this might be where you want to use your little pencil instead. And then maybe come back. We'll do this one, see how this turns out. And then have less water on our brush, but just a tiny bit. It's mostly just wet from before. So, I mean, then you've got a couple of, whoops, then you've got a couple of different, you know, methods that you've used even, even there. This one, you know, which might work a little bit better because like where I drug it out, those guys don't have much green left to them. But, you know, just, you just have fun with it, right, you guys? Just get out your fun things and do it. And then maybe we could just add these a little bit more grassy than they've got them. And then just, just take it and really, you know, just be real easy and just flick it up. Just flick it up so you've got the the kind of the pointy end of that. I should have probably done the road first though. But you can just keep working on it and playing with it. And um, look, that's kind of cute. I like it. It's, it's turning out kind of fun. I should have put my road in first, maybe you guys. Let's, but here, let's do this. Let's do this this way. Let's go ahead and just put, fill a little bit of color in. Now, this this is a funny line across here. It had it somewhere else. And I'm just like, I don't, oh, I know. It was in that Alpine scene. And I'm like, I don't really get what that's supposed to be. Maybe you guys. <laughs> what do you think? Let's, let's go back and look at this. See, they've got the same thing here. This straight line across here. And I assume this is kind of like road right here. I don't know what that is. Do you think that's supposed to be sidewalk? Maybe that's what this is here, you think? I'm open to suggestions because I have no clue. <laughs> so Melanie says, the pencils make an easy shadow line that looks great. Yeah, I think you're right. And we could just kind of give it a hint of color. You know, sometimes when you have, um, when you're adding color to something, you can just give it like the suggestion that it's there. It doesn't have to be everywhere. Like if we get enough water on here and get this to dissolve in some of these places, it doesn't have to be you know, we don't have the harsh lines and we don't have to fill in absolutely every spot, but we've still got that hint of color. And you know, your, your mind, your eyes, it's really interesting how sometimes um, our mind fills in the rest of sometimes what we really aren't seeing. Have any of you guys seen those things like where it'll be a whole bunch of um, letters all crammed together and words and then I'll go, oh, you know, if you can, if you can read this, there's only a certain, a per, certain bunch of people that can read this and blah, blah, blah. 
But, you know, the point is they've taken out or they'll jumble up the letters in between and they say that the science behind that is if a word has the right letter at the beginning and the right letter at the end, that sometimes the goofy uh, mixed up letters in between, your mind fixes that. And I just think that is so interesting. I just think that's so amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Martha says she tried watercolored pencils. She, no, tried. Oh, you tried them 14 years ago and gave up. Is that what you're saying? Curb. Sharon thinks it's a curb. I think um, is the top of a stone fence. No, I don't think, Melanie, I don't think so because the driveway comes down here and goes across it. So, yeah, I almost think maybe it was supposed to be a sidewalk, but I don't know. But you can just keep playing and playing. And then this one, you guys, I actually, now I don't know, I haven't heard, but I think that part of this may be a like the beach scene could be maybe summer this could be winter um this maybe could be spring and this fall because these leaves are falling off now i have not heard anybody say that or you know you could actually both of these could be kind of summery or spring um and look how different, look at the different technique that this was with the marker and kind of using it on the, um, on the palette and bringing it to the paper more like watercolor than this is using the pencil and dragging the color out. It's, um, it's a much brighter effect, this one over on the left than the one on the right. And then on this one, <clears throat> This one mostly is the colored pencil just as it's laid down. And then the pretty much the only place I used the Gamsol was on the mount. I tried to do it on the sky some, but I don't think I had enough pigment to really, you know, do much of anything. I didn't lay enough down. But on the mountains, um, it really smoothed it out. And I tell you, I spent many, many years looking out a <laughs> Maybe this is why I like this. Not that we had alpine things looking, but from our front window where I grew up, um, we had an expanse of the foothills of the Rocky Mountains that we could see from our front window. And I spent many years looking at what mountain colors look like. And on a good day, this this is the this is pretty mountain color on a good day, you guys. <laughs> so I I love that. This one I'm happy with those mountain colors. I have to admit that. So, um, you know, just a lot of fun. But yeah, you know, it's it just is a lot of fun to see, you know, what um, you know, what you can what you can do and just have a play. Try it out. And it's just a piece of paper, a little ink, and if you know, if you don't like the way it turns out at first, you know, try it again. Use a little less water, a little more water, you know, whatever you want to do. Mix up which step you did first, right? It's just, um, it's just a lot of fun to do it. And I think that's one of the important things is perhaps even to take the things that maybe didn't turn out and maybe, maybe have a spot, maybe you make a pocket for like the, the rejects. Make a pocket back here for the rejects. And then on the back of it, you write what happened. That might not be a, you know, a, a journal can be a, um, you know, something that you're keeping track of and that you are going to um, track your progress. So if you're going to track your progress, you probably want to know what went right and what went wrong, right? Um, or, you know, I, I think you do. <laughs> I mean, I could I could make a mistake, and if I don't do something to kind of acknowledge that and know where I went wrong, the next time I might forget, and I might do it the same way because that might be the way that I was inclined to do it in the first place. 
and then you know then it's all messed up right but um following me is gonna be mary she's coming up the painted peach if you're in the take five group you know all you'll have to do is just refresh your screen uh or your browser sorry <laughs> refresh your browser and you'll be able to um see mary when she comes on mm, excuse me so we have um so i started us off and then we've got uh, Mary with the painted peach. We've got Jane, Jeannie Clifton with Clifton's Crafty Casa. And then we've got Christy from Funky Junk Inspiration. And Susan with, oh my goodness, Susan, what did you, Susan, let's see, she, I think she changed hers to so, in, so did she change it to so inspiring ideas? And she was before with her page name. Um, it was S-E-W. Yes, yeah, So Inspired Designs. S-E-W for So. And um, that's actually her initials. So Susan, I think it's Susan Ellis White. And so that's her initials. So that's kind of clever. I love that. Yes. Look, I, I actually knew it. And I know she's worked hard. She's decided to change the name of her, her page. I laughed. I think so many. We I think we made her feel bad, and we told her it was so long. And what when she says it, it makes sense. When I try to say it, it's like, wait, what was it? What it was? Um, it was revive DIY, and um, and then that's all I could do. <laughs> and I I always felt so bad. <laughs> anyway, let's go over, you guys. Thanks for joining me today. It's been a lot of fun. I hope you'll give this a try and share with us what you do as well. And we will see you later. I'll be on again tomorrow at uh, 1, 1 45. So come on over and hang out with me again tomorrow. We'll be doing some fun things tomorrow. You guys take care. Bye-bye.